This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. All this week, I am talking with Dr. Catherine Ramsland. Dr. Catherine Ramsland, as you may know if you're a follower of true crime, wrote the book on Dennis Rader, the BTK killer, his autobiography, in fact. She spent many years communicating back and forth with Dennis, gaining an insight unlike anyone else into the mind of one of the most notorious serial killers alive today. This week, we're going in to her mind to learn about the experiences that she had while working with Dennis Rader at that time and all the way up to today trying to better understand the mind of a killer. Join me all this week for parts one through five of my conversation with Dr. Catherine Ramsland right here on the podcast. He obviously continued on with more crimes. How did he gain the confidence to continue? Was it the fact that time had passed and he had not been caught and that just kind of slowly built the confidence crime by crime? Yeah, I'm not sure it was confidence as much as compulsion. Okay. He... Yes, he didn't get caught, so that felt better. But he killed only three months later. It wasn't a very long time to pass. He didn't get caught. Nothing in the news suggested he had been seen, that they had a suspect or anything like that. And so then he thought, if he's more careful about the next person he's going to choose, then he minimizes his chances of being caught again. And so he scoped out a house where there was a young woman who lived alone. Uh, and no dogs. So, he, you know, and he watched her routine. So he figured out when she'd be there, when she wouldn't. And so he's a lot more careful with the second incident. But he did, and he did break into the house. He did wait for her, but she came home with her brother. So once again, he's made a pretty huge mistake. Yeah. And he put them in two different rooms, tied her up, but he struggled with the brother. Other went to grab, he had two guns with them. The brother went to grab, uh, Kevin was the brother. He went to grab one of the guns and Raider really thought he was going to get shot and killed in, mm-hmm. in this particular house. He did shoot Kevin and shot him in the head, but Kevin nevertheless, and thought he was dead, went back to the other room and heard Kevin run out. Kevin was able to get up and run out, even though he was shot. And so now Raider is realizing, oh my God, now we have a witness. and. I have very little time, but still he stayed. Yeah. And he didn't just, he didn't shoot her. He stabbed her because he had read about it in a magazine that this is how some other killer had done it. And so it was an experiment and he didn't like it. He didn't like stabbing somebody. It was horrible from his perspective. How he, he... She was still alive when the police came. Yeah. You know, he, but he had a plan. I think he had, I think this is where he had a bag of groceries that he had stashed somewhere and he could pick it up and look like he was just in the neighborhood shopping. Yeah. Yeah. If if somebody were to stop and ask, he would look like just an innocent resident getting something from the grocery store. In Wichita, I, I spent about 10 years there working at a radio station called KFDI, uh, the big news radio station, was there right after he was sentenced. And what I learned when living in Wichita is almost everyone has some sort of a connective BTK story, whether it's themselves, their aunt, their mom, their sister, their brother. There's always somebody who has some degree of separation from what they suspect may have been an interaction with with Dennis Rader. Many stories of, well, I came home and the back door was open and it was at the time of when he was striking uh, and nothing happened, but a lot of people wonder, you know, was, were they, could have been a victim. I know he had that longer list. Did he talk about going out and scaring people or doing missions of just trying to see what the situation would be like going into people's homes, not with the intention to kill that day, but to basically do recognizance on a home? Oh, he did do that. Now, I'll just say this. I get a lot of emails from people who are sure <laughs> he tried to pick them up sure. or he came in their house or and they described things that didn't happen, at least from 
he wasn't in that neighborhood or yeah. he, he wasn't there that day or he was that was not his mo <laughs> sure you know so i do get an, because everybody wants to think that was the only person who was out there doing this and <laughs> sure. he wasn't by any means the yeah. only person doing these kinds of things but yes he would go into houses to check them out he was actually a security system person he would go into people homes and install their security systems. Mm-hmm. So he did no layouts. He did know how security systems worked. If he identified a potential victim doing that, he would know how to set it up so he could let himself in. So he did do a few where he then did not go back, but certainly had ideas about possibilities. How did he talk about how he managed to balance home and murder life, if you will, you know, home and work well, life. It, it, yeah. He has a great metaphor, actually. Yeah. You know, psychologists call this compartmentalization, which is a long word that, that isn't really as vivid as Raider's idea. He calls it cubing. Okay. And what, by that, he means that they take a cube and on each side is a, an identity. So Boy Scout, volunteer, good husband, serial killer, thief. Good father, church president, you know, things like yeah. that. So, so if you think of each of the sides of the cube as being one of those identities, he could turn whatever side he needed, depending on the circumstances, and flip, you know, make quick pivots to another one if needed. So he could be a good neighbor, but then he spots one of his neighbors, which didn't happen, that he thought would make a good victim, and bang, and turn it back around. He's the serial killer now. But turn that back around, he's the good father when his daughter gets scared that a woman in her neighborhood had been killed. Yeah. Right? So it's all the sides are one person, but he can, but they're not visible to him when he's got one side turned out. Right? So I think that's a really interesting notion. He called them life frames and that he can switch in and out of any given life frame depending on the circumstances. And that would only be achievable if you do not have any commitment to integrity or truth and someone who's a narcissist especially a psychopathic type of narcissist doesn't their commitment is to themselves and to what they want so they will use anything they need to get there and if if what they want is to live a supposedly normal life while also being able to kill they'll develop their life to accommodate both. Sure. Was there ever any time that he spoke of prior to his arrest for those many decades that he was concerned that maybe a family member may have been on to him or suspicious in, in any way, shape, or form of his activities? His, it, he was afraid a couple of times that his wife, like once he was writing a postcard to, because he played this cat and mouse game with the media where he'd send yeah, things. Sure, sure. And once his wife caught him spelling something, she, she said, you spell your words like that BTK guy. <laughs> and he quickly covered and said, well, we probably went to the same schools with the same kinds of exercises and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And there were a couple other things where... You know, she, but the thing is, let me just say on her behalf Mm -hmm. and on behalf of all families of these guys everywhere, no one is thinking the guy I live with is a serial killer or my son or my daughter. They're not thinking that. They will see almost everything in the most benign possible way. So it's easy to say, well, okay, that makes sense. Or, well, you know, you were out last night and this murder happened. Oh, okay. You were at the library. Okay. That's typically what people will do. Sure. They will not immediately go, well, wait a minute, you were gone and a murder happened. So you must be the murderer because that would make them automatically unsafe to think that. So yeah, yeah, people noticed a couple of odd things that, that gave, that made him sweat, but nobody really thought too much about it. And I think that's what you're going to find in one case after another of those serial killers who have families and have jobs and have obligations is it's very easy for people around them to not see how, you know, how evil they are, how 
duplicitous they are, how manipulative they are. Because for the most part, we're not thinking that about other people. Did he ever actively try to condition his family in one way, shape, or form to help hide who he was? That's something I've been wondering about a bit with the recent Rex Hewerman arrest. Makes me wonder how much was going on with this family that slowly, insidiously, he got them thinking one way to hide his tracks where otherwise they may look a little more evident. Well, it's not just family, it's friends, it's a co-worker. I mean, that's what a person who's living a double life, and whether it's a serial killer or someone just having an affair, Mm, sure, a person living a double life is actively deceiving people on a regular basis Mm -hmm. to keep them from being suspicious. Mm -hmm. And since Rado wasn't killing anywhere except for in one, one instance, he wasn't killing where his family might say, well, wow, you knew that person or you were last seen with that person. It wasn't anything like that. So why would they think anything? There's more to come in my conversation with Dr. Catherine Ramsland about the BTK killer, Dennis Rader. Press subscribe so you don't miss any of our five-part series here on the podcast. I'm Tony Bruschi. Stay with us. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers Podcast, dropping soon. Press subscribe now.